Hello everyone and welcome back to another Lightroom tutorial. My name is Matt Kuda and today we're going to talk about focus stacking. Recently I went on a trip in North Carolina to a waterfall and I talked in that trip and tutorial on what focus stacking is in the field. Well now the follow-up video is how do I actually get that focus stack to stack together and work. And we're gonna explain all of that here in this video. I am using Adobe Lightroom Classic version 14.4 and Camera Raw 17.4. This video uh, assumes that you are using Lightroom Classic and also that you have these photo subscription with Adobe, which also gives you uh, Photoshop. Those two work hand in hand, especially with layering and so forth. So let's get into this and I want to show you, first of all, what the focus stacking looks like when you're done. If I go into this uh, first image over here on the left. Um, and I zoom in on this photograph you will see that at the top, everything is out of focus. That is on purpose because a focus stack is kind of what it sounds like. It is different areas of your photograph that are in focus and then combined together later in post to give you a perfect, really what hyperfocal distance should be except done digitally. And in this first image here, you can see that down here, I don't know if you can see it well, but down here, this water down at the bottom, this pool is in focus. If I go to the next image, we're going to go slightly up the waterfall here now, slightly up the waterfall. And you're going to see that this layer here is now in focus. So you can see over here, the ferns are in focus. This rock is slightly in focus. Um, but things are still kind of going out of focus as we go up the waterfall. That's because it's hard to tell in, in the actual photo. But actually, this waterfall is going backward quite a bit. If I go to the next image over... Now we can see all of this area is in full focus in the center. And we're probably starting to get more of this into focus as well. So what I'm doing in the field here is I'm literally just focusing at these different levels of the waterfall and taking a photograph. And then the final image, if we go all the way up to the top, we will see that this is now in focus. So I have this four shot image, focus stack, but how do I get this to be one image? And this is really not that complicated. All I do is I go in here to my library. I'm on my library tab up here in the corner. All I do is left click on the first image hold down the shift button and select the fourth image and now they are all selected at this point i'm going to right click and i'm going to say edit in but instead of saying edit in adobe photoshop 2025 i'm going to say open as layers in photoshop You'll see Adobe Photoshop starts to fire up. And we're now in Photoshop. And what you're seeing is that the various over here to our right, we can see the flickering. And what you're seeing is these various images that we just looked at coming together over here to the right in the layers over here. So we've got these four layers now, which are our four photographs. I think you're starting to see where this is going here. 
I'm gonna go ahead and maximize the screen. I'm gonna go ahead now. If we go back over to this layers palette, we select that top photo over here. And then again, I hold down my shift button, left click on the bottom. Now I have all four layers selected. I go all the way up here to the top to my menu, across the top, click the edit button. And then this is important. We're gonna do auto align layers. Now what this will do is Photoshop will go in here and it will say, okay, I have these four images. What I wanna do is make sure that they are at least aligned properly that the outline of this rock, for example, here in the middle is the same as the next one and the next one and the next one. And the reason it has to do that is even though you're taking it locked down on a tripod, hopefully, you will still have situations where just a slight movement has occurred between the shots. And that can be because the rock settled under your, your tripod a little bit. It could be because you bumped the tripod a little bit. Any of these things are possible. The wind could have blown it a little bit. I mean, that's probably not going to happen, but you know, you get, you get the idea. Your camera moved slightly. So what we're going to do is hit auto align layers right here. It's going to say, it's going to pop up this auto align layers um, dialog box. There's a lot of different types of alignment here. I think the best thing for you to select, especially uh, for this type of thing is just auto. It's gonna look at it and figure out what it needs to do. Click okay. Now it's going through and it's gonna align these layers. It does it fairly fast if you have a decently fast machine. Um, and it's done. There, there was very little it needed to do to align. I think it aligned it just a tiny bit. Um, but as you can see, this is the final product. Now, it hasn't done any kind of stacking yet. That's the next step, is you have to do the stacking part next. Auto align layers just aligns them. It does nothing for your focus stacking. So we still have them selected over here. You can tell because they're a different color gray over here in the layers panel. And so if we go up here, to edit the same exact menu and we come down to auto blend layers. It's right below auto align layers. Go to auto blend layers. It knows what we want to do. It's saying, oh, I see what you want. You want to stack your images. I mean, it's pretty smart. It's going to give us seamless tones and colors and it's going to do content aware fill on transparent areas. And it will do that if you, if, if when it auto aligned, if you have some alignment issues, it will automatically do a content aware fill in those areas. So I'm going to click the okay button now, and it's going to do its thing. It's going to blend those selected layers and it's going to give you the perfect focus stack. And just like that, it's done. It, it is absolutely done. And now what we're gonna do to get us back into, and this is a critical step, to get you back into Lightroom. You go up here and click the file button, or file menu uh, drop down, save. Also you can do control S or option S on the Mac, save. It's gonna tell you it's saving it down here in the left corner. And when it's done, you just close it. And back here, we now have a new image and it is a TIFF image. And if we look over here, it's already selected it. By default, it will select it. I hate that it puts it like in this weird spot right over here, but it's, it's weird that it does that. But anyway, um, if we look over here, we have this new, name 
called dash with a dash edit dot tiff suffix on it. And that's how you know that's the new one. If I double click on that image, now we can look at this whole image and it all should be in perfect focus. Look up here at the top. I'm going across. It looks good. This is with a 50 millimeter at F13 at four seconds. As we go down, I can see that it is staying in focus. Still in focus. Great sharp image. I haven't done any sharpening to it or anything yet. And there it is. Your whole image is in perfect focus. Look at that rock. That rock just says it all. Look how perfect it is. All the way across that middle section. And it just does a perfect job of blending. That is one of the coolest features, I think. And it's been around for a while. But it's one of the coolest features uh, in Lightroom slash uh, Photoshop. Now, if I wanted to finish this image off, um, just a little bonus feature here. Number one, I do not like these stupid balancing rocks that people put everywhere in photo in uh, on waterfalls. It irritates the fire out of me. If I would have known it was there, I would have gone up there and literally destroyed it. But um, I didn't see it. It was way up the waterfall. I could take that out. Probably nobody would notice it. Um, the other thing I would do here is I would add just a tiny bit of sharpening. So in order to do that, I would go over here to my develop module up here at the top. And I will do a global change on here. Very, very small amount. I'm going to add sharpening. Let's do about 17 sharpen. Let's zoom in on a part of the waterfall that might need to be sharp. And like, I didn't even really need that sharpening, honestly. Uh, but it really, it really made it pop. Let's bring it back to 13. And the other thing that I would do is I would come up here and I would add a tiny bit of vibrance to really make those greens pop. Tiny bit of saturation. And we're done. I've got, you can see this red right here. I've got a little bit of overexposure up here in this tiny stretch of the waterfall. You could easily do some cloning there if you wanted to, to, to make that um, waterfall not blown out. But um, that's pretty much all I would do with this image. I mean, yeah, there's some other things you could do. The other thing I would probably do is I would come up here and I would select the masking tool. And I would select the brush. And I would increase the brush a little bit with my control, with my uh, third mouse wheel or my third button or mouse wheel. And I would select all of this at the top because I don't like all that brush up in there. And I would select this hot spot over here to the right. I would have probably done this before I um, did my stacking, but just to give you an idea here of what I want it to look like when it's done, I'm gonna come back out off of that. And um, I'm gonna take my exposure slider, and I'm gonna bring it down, I'm gonna make, make that go away and emphasize the waterfall. And you can see what you end up with is a fairly nice looking image. Of a waterfall. I hope that this tutorial helped you. I hope that you'll uh, try focus stacking the next time you're out and about uh, doing waterfalls or doing scenics. And I think you'll find how much of a help it is. So, just in conclusion, why not just 
why wouldn't I just go to F22 and just shoot this scene the way it is? And and the the short answer is you could do that. The problem is that um, it may not be the sweet. It may introduce additional problems with the photograph. Um, you may end up starting to get diffraction that's coming in at F22, F16. A lot of people will shoot landscapes at like F13, um, F10, no, no higher than F16. Um, and they will then focus stack it in post to get the best sharpness, the best out of their lens. And, and I kind of agree with that. Um, I do agree with it. I think it's a great idea. You don't always have time to do those type of things. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Thanks for watching. Make it a great day. And as always, get out there and enjoy nature. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching this video. You know, if you really want to help me out, and I hope you do, please click like and subscribe below. I know we all say this, but the fact is, there's nothing better that helps us than you being involved, than you watching these videos, and your support. Thanks a lot.